lawnmower. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. which ones I've got. that you weren't here and Joan was here. He was here first and, yeah. and then Joan got here. She brought him in and then he had to go back home to get his hearing aids because he forgot his oh, hearing no. aids. So oh. he didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't come back. <laughs> She made you sit on the hood? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I ordered it. <laughs> you know, you, you have to pose right, you know, for if you're turning left or right. And... Well, I make all the noises. Oh, okay. You <laughs> <laughs> honk, honk. <laughs> uh, that's funny. How about you? How was your day? Busy. That's a good thing, isn't it? No. Oh. <laughs> 
Too busy. Too busy. Yeah, I want more time to study. Yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling. Well, last week when we started on this course, I said, forget it. You can wait for a while. <laughs> I got books and I'm tearing them. Uh, this week started to back up and I had to get something done. So I had about half as much study time as I normally get. Uh, I'm keeping up, but uh, I'd rather study. Uh, I have about four or five different things on a burner somewhere. Yeah, yep, yeah, I know the feeling. I like to get up real early in the morning. No interruptions and just plow through it. The phone doesn't ring, nobody knocks on the door. They did, they'd only do it once. I'm still in my night clothes, but I'd open that door and scare them to death. And they'd say, Where's your time? <laughs> <laughs> I said, That's least of my worries. And, uh, uh, yeah, love that early morning. Uh, I accept the two o'clock easy. There's one thing in the military I, I could do that I can't do now. And I, I stay up all night. I, not anymore. I mean, if I make it past midnight, I'm okay. But from 11 to midnight, that's, I wouldn't want to be driving. I'd fall asleep. But if I can make it over that hump, I'm okay. I go crazy around the full moon. Uh, I can't sleep when I do lay down. Uh, well, I found the easiest way to get to sleep drink a big old pot of coffee and then just lay down. Huh? She can do that. Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, yeah. That's what I do. I drink the coffee, get my tummy nice and warm, and I go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, it just relaxes me, that warm fluid. Yeah. It's like baby's milk, I guess. <laughs> If I drank that much coffee, I'd be sitting there with my teeth chattering, my eyes bugging out of my head. <laughs> She'd drink coffee, lay down, and start snoring like a lumberjack. <laughs> 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 uh, we're all different, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Keeps me on my toes. <laughs> share with you a, a fellow that came to uh, meet me the other day. Um, he he was a pastor up in uh, either Paulding or Putman County up north for years and um, had a burden for uh, deserted or abandoned kids. So they started um, fostering. fellow came to their church and did uh, missionary work in Haiti. They went to Haiti and when they got down there and saw all those kids just roaming the streets. Uh, the Lord broke his heart and came back and here six years later um, he resigned as a pastor and he started a ministry um, that seeks to take those kids and at first it was just in Haiti, but now it's all around the world. Take these kids, he's a real strong local church person, so he feels like the responsibility should be the local church. So he connects with local churches and asks them for families that would be willing to harbor these children in a foster relationship. So the church does all the funding. The church people are the ones that actually care for the kids. These are all Haitian children. Now, now it's all over the world. So uh, just a child from anywhere. Yeah, and just about, and instead of taking them, extracting them from their culture and bringing them to the United States or something like that, or throwing a bunch of cash at a problem, they don't like to justify it because you threw a lot of money at it. They're actually connecting with local churches in the area with people in that local church who will care for the kids and the churches that will fund it. And uh, so then what they've done is they have um, um, empowered these kids as they grow in that family to uh, begin a business. And they assist.
assist them with financing that business so that the kids not only learn how to be a family, but when they get out, because education is usually a problem in all those areas, they can have a vocation that they can actually do uh, so they can sustain themselves like the guy was. Took about an hour. He wanted 10 minutes. And I said, keep talking, I like it. <laughs> But I, I like the fact that it was you know, strong local church ministry and, uh, that you know, the Western world just loves to throw cash at a problem yeah. and it justifies in their mind. Uh, but this is where you actually hands on and say, that's pretty exciting. Hopefully we can get him to come present his work here sometime in the near future. I guess we should do that. But it's so hard to find uh, um, anything other than parachurch ministries now. Uh, parachurch meaning ministries that become so big they're out of the church rather than in the church. So it's pretty good. Well, good evening. For those joining us online, let me check and make sure that I got us all going. Looks like it. We've got some people already checked in. Good evening to you. Good to have you with us. One of my favorite people in the whole wide world is on. I saw their name. And uh, I have about 150,000 of those. My favorite, very favorite person in the whole wide world. Uh, but uh, good to have uh, you with us tonight. What a beautiful day. I don't know how to, uh, if you like this kind of weather. <clears throat> it could be another 40 degrees warmer for me. But uh, beautiful sunshine and uh, short sleeve shirt weather. Around three this afternoon, it was short sleeve. It was kind of cool before then, but a uh, great, great day. And I couldn't help but think today as I was piddling. Uh, boy, it's not going to be very long until I'm going to say, well, we only got three inches. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite time of the year. <laughs> uh, winter time, amen. So, but uh, I know a lot of folks like the different seasons. Um, I like to see the change. I just don't like to live on all the changes. Amen. Uh, but hopefully you had a good day. And uh, every day with the Lord is good. Amen. Yeah. And we thank the Lord for that. I have uh, two, um, three uh, that I want to make mention prayer requests. Uh, one is a praise. And that is uh, Anna. Uh, that My Anna. Uh, was having some abdominal and chest pains and when you've gone through everything she's gone through you can't help that your mind starts fabricating and she finally was able to get a doctor to recommend that she have a CT scan which she had this past week and it came back uh, negative no cancer and so they think that the pain is just from scar tissue and so she was uh, happy she sent me a text and it was a uh, one of those little pictures on the text and it was someone dancing and she said it is a Baptist dance <laughs> okay it's not it's not a, a non-Baptist dance but she said I'm just rejoicing in the Lord he's good all the time but when you get that good news from your perspective as well as from his it is a good day uh, so that's a phrase. And then two, uh, Tracy Wells, uh, I understand she's number seven on our list. She is coming back from the hospital today, got discharged. They removed the um, upper lobe of her lung, and she's back. And uh, then uh, <coughs> I don't know at this time, uh, but... Uh, uh, number 12, Doris was, um, they called the family in Sunday afternoon. She's lasted all the way till today. Today, uh, there was additional evidence that it would be close. So she may have already gone to be with the Lord by now, but uh, those are three that I really wanted to remember. And then uh, one more, an answer to prayer. Uh, she is the one I referred to earlier as one of my favorite all-time people in the world. Uh, Shirley, 
uh, we've been praying for her. She had back surgery and recovering, and uh, she is uh, able, she's exceeded what the doctors expected, and uh, she's doing really well, and we just absolutely praise the Lord for uh, his answer to prayer, and also for you folks. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to have to get Shirley and her husband to come up here so that you can see the face with the name, and uh, if we can get him up here and uh, make a special day out of it, we'll try to do that. Uh, but you've been so faithful in praying for her, and I appreciate that. I know that she does, and um, the Lord is good all the time, and we rejoice in that. Um, this past uh, sun Sunday afternoon, um, I don't know how many of you will know the name because the family was gone before you guys got here, but um, Ken and Judy knew. Um, we had prayed for Judy off and on quite a bit, and her husband, Ken, passed away. His viewing was Saturday, a Sunday, and the funeral then was Monday. Um, and um, uh, Judy is in bad shape, real bad shape, uh, but uh, Ken's uh, dropped his robe of flesh in uh, Rose, he's with the Lord, and that is a great joy. So continue to remember the new family. I know that they would appreciate that. Okay. Well, I think that's all the announcements that I have right off the top of my head. Don't forget this Sunday, church picnic. Yay! We're looking forward to that. So all the time, a little different change of address. Uh, some things got moved around. I guess they're having the Civil War reenactment over here where we normally have the picnic at um, uh, this park. And so we'll be meeting behind the park that's behind the YMCA. And um, so, and if you just come Sunday and enjoy yourself, I hope that you will. We'll have a great time. We always do. And uh, the food's always good. Flies are extra. Okay, but the food's good. <laughs> and uh, uh, you say, this is the one time I want the adults to go first. I've seen those kids in that food, and I do not want to eat after they've got their hands all over us. So, uh, just kidding. We have a great time. Good time to have fellowship one with another. How many of you saw Sunday that I had Renly? Did you see I was carrying Renly around? Oh, I had her for a short period of time until she finally realized I wasn't her mom or dad. And she uh, let out a battle cry. <laughs> That's when you hunt the parent quick to say, here. But uh, I had little Renly in my hands, and she went around and shook hands with different people. What a blessing we have here. So many young people, young kids. And um, I don't know if you remember when Luke first came, um, he would not let go of his mom's hand unless he had a hold of Brenda's hand. And Sunday he, on his way out, on his own, looked up at me, gave me a big wave and went on his way. That's nice, just see the kids grow and, and get the routine of church and relationships down and just see them change in their lives. So praise the Lord for that. Great, great, great. If I could go on. That's very, very good. Um, we're going to continue our study tonight. Um, the, the larger question that we've been dealing with is, what's the difference between the local church and the universal church? Okay, so we did. We began that study with, uh, first of all, identifying uh, the history of the movement and then some names to the movement. And um, then I felt like we might be getting a little cloudy and all that, so I took a, a, a step back, and we decided we were going to go through truths that cannot be denied, truths in the Bible that cannot be denied, and I believe that after we finish this, I don't know if we'll do all 12, but we'll get a few of them. I think after we get this done, we can return back to the tail end uh, Mr. Graves and his work in what's now referred to as landmarkism. Um, and there are many splinters of that, but he was the one that uh, brought it to the forefront nationally. And it will end up uh, uh, looking a little bit more at how that developed. <clears throat> and then we'll go through the tenets, the beliefs 
of um, landmarkism. And I think when we do that, what we've done here will, will stand in such stark contrast that it will be real easy uh, to make the connection. So uh, stick with me. I also have, and I don't know if we'll get to it tonight, probably not, but you can see my artwork. I did this as a wheat and dinner tonight. And uh, I hope that we can get to this in the next couple weeks because this will take all of this and it will put it in a chart easy to see. So kind of excited and hope that you are as excited as I am. All right, so what uh, uh, truths that cannot be denied, let's go to the Lord and ask him to bless us and then we'll get right into it. Father, thank you so much. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior is he. Thank you, Lord, for taking away our sin, giving us the earnest of your presence, the Holy Spirit, and leaving us a living Word of God. Now I pray, Father, that you would uh, plant it into our hearts, open our minds to understand it, and help us to receive the engrafted Word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so what are the truths that cannot be denied? Number one, there are divisions in the Bible. You cannot, it doesn't matter. I mean, people don't have to believe it. That's fine. You can't deny it. Old Testament, New Testament, that's one, but there's a bunch of them, okay? There are divisions in the Bible. Someone that does not divide the Bible not only is um, willfully ignorant, they also deny the truth of Scripture. Because First Timothy says that we're to study to show ourselves approved in God of workmen that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are divisions. It doesn't matter if a person believes it or not. It's, it's undeniable. Number two, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are not, are not the same. And it doesn't matter how many times you try to uh, blend them, and it doesn't matter the two or three times that there seems to be an overlap between the two, there are so many that do not. I don't know why you would ever spend your time on two or three that is confusing. Why would you look at the whole? Uh, there's no way you can get through the Bible, again, unless you just choose, you don't want to believe it, uh, that there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And as we mentioned last week, these two here, this is primarily Jewish, and this is other. Other as in not Gentile, not Jew, it is Church of God. Other. So you have these two. It's, you cannot deny that they're different. And then uh, the third one is Peter and Paul had different ministries. We looked at Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. It's real obvious that Paul even said, you know, one was to the circumcision, one was to the uncircumcision. Again, Jew and Gentile. And then we mentioned number four. Paul's ministry was unlike John the Baptist. And it was unlike Jesus. That almost sounds sacrilegious, but as we looked at it, we saw in the scripture that um, uh, the most defining of this one is John 1.12 and John 1.11. John 1.11, he came into his own, and his own received him not. John 1.12, as many as received him, and then gave the power to become the sons of God, even those that believe on his name. So it's different. Paul's ministry is unlike John the Baptist, and it was unlike Jesus. Uh, we looked last week that Jesus was very specific about what the gospel was and very specific of who it would go to. And both John the Baptist and Jesus' ministry was to the Jew. Paul's ministry was not. And this is where we stopped and where we'll pick it up tonight, and that is the audience was the difference. The audience was the difference. Look at Matthew chapter 3, if you would, with me. Matthew chapter 3, and just notice if you would here with me, Matthew chapter 3, and notice again, this is John's ministry. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, geographical location, Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
for this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. That's interesting because we go back to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. It is the prophecy of the ministry of the forerunner to the nation of Israel. So we have Judea, verse 1. We have a quote from Isaiah that was specifically given to the nation of Israel. And then verse 4, and the same, and the, John had raiment of camel hair, leather girdle about his loins, ate meat, and his meat was locusts and honey. Now who went out to see him? Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the regions round about Jordan. And so who was the group? It was Jews. When John speaks afterwards, because he's confronted with the Pharisees and the Sadducees in disbelief, verse 7, who does the, who's the first person he picks up in his narrative, verse 9? Or, or the people that, that he is addressing, who's the first person that they pick up in their narrative, verse 9? Abraham. Yeah. And what do they say? God is able of these stones to raise up what? Children. Children. All right, Abraham. And so John is speaking about this, and he said, this is um, the ministry that I've been uh, commit, commissioned to be and, uh, and to do. And, um, and he says, verse 11, I came first, but there's someone that's coming after me because I'm just the forerunner. I'm just the one. And again, that prophecy of the forerunner Isaiah 40 in Malachi chapter 3 and chapter 4 is um, a forerunner to the nation of Israel. So it's interesting, the audience of John was Jewish. Uh, we've looked at this, we're just a few chapters over, Matthew chapter 10, and again just reiterating, we're going to look at these verses a lot, you're going to get so tired of hearing me say these verses, <laughs> but it's, it's so important for us to learn this. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, and look at verse number 5. Jesus gets his 12 disciples. What's the first thing he tell, tells them to do in verse 5? Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. Samaritans were Gentiles who had married Jewish. So, uh, mixed uh, people. Verse 6, in case you didn't understand, verse 5, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And there was a, a specific message to preach. As you go, verse 7, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does the kingdom of heaven look like? Heal the sick, verse 8, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely be received, freely give. Don't worry about your necessities of life, verse 9, provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purse, nor script for your journeys, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And what are they supposed to do? Into whatever city or town ye enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till thou uh, till you go hence. Thence. All right. So uh, we could go on. We're not. But this uh, again, you look at that. There's no question at all that the audience is Jewish. The audience is Jewish. Do not go to the Gentiles or even a mixture of Gentiles. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I've always enjoyed this. I, I drew little circles around it uh, when... Um, I, I came into uh, the book of Acts one of the first times. Acts chapter 2, it's good to identify who we're talking about. Notice it says, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Well, who's the they? Well, if you look at chapter 1, um, uh, notice it says, verse 13, and when they were come in, verse chapter 1, verse 13, they, there's the they again, went up in the upper room where abode Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. In those days, Peter stood in the midst of the disciples and said, 
parenthesis, the number of names together were about 120. So about 120 people, including the ones that he just mentioned. That is the they. Verse uh, Chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And uh, again, they, uh, verse 14 of chapter 1, they all continued with one. I guess they were really like Japanese auto cars. I don't know. They all were in accord. <laughs> so uh, they, they accorded in chapter 1, verse 14. They were in accord. Chapter 2, verse 1. They had a lot of accords. Okay. So they got the they in verse 1, right? Notice it again in verse 2. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind that filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them. These are the things that I circle. They, they, them. Look at the last of uh, verse 3. Uh, sat upon each of them. Look at verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, ah, Jews, devout men. Now, what do we know about the list of people in verse 13 of chapter 1? Jew, Gentile, Jew. Jew. They, 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 and then verse well, 5 of chapter 2, they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, Jew. devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude, there it is again. It's important to understand who we're talking to. Look at verse 7. And they were all amazed. Uh -huh. All right. Come on down to verse 12. And they were all amazed. Come on down to verse 14. We're going to get some uh, definition. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem. And he comes down and he talks about them. Verse 22, further definition. Ye men of Israel. Israel. There we go. And you come on down, he gives his long story. Then verse 36, therefore let all the house of Israel know. Israel. All right. Verse 37, now when they heard this, they... Were picked in their heart. I'm emphasizing that just to let you know that there's no way you can get anything other than Jew. It's Jewish. Okay. <laughs> then Peter said unto them, uh, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as our Lord, uh, the Lord our God shall call. And he talks, uh, goes on down, and he talks about them. And verse 44, uh, everything takes place. And lo and behold, in verse 47, the reason that some people uh, clamor after this as being not Jew is because praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be said. So those two words, church and save, uh, throw the monkey wrench in so many people when they read chapter 2 of Acts because they said they saw all the these, they's, them's, theirs, you, yours, all through Acts chapter 2. We'll ignore all of that and we'll throw our hat in the last verse because it has two words that we really like, church and saved. All right? So we're going to get to that later, but I just want you to see in Acts chapter 2, all of those that are addressed there are Jews. Mm -hmm. Now look at Galatians chapter 1. We spent a lot of time in this. We'll keep doing it just so you can see how important these chapters and these verses are. Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 11 Paul certifies that whatever he was teaching and preaching was not after men. Didn't get it from men. He called it the gospel. 
He wasn't taught it, verse 12, but by the revelation, Jesus revealed it to him through the scriptures. And he talks about that. Uh, look over at chapter 2, verse 7. Uh, I got the gospel to the uncircumcision, and Peter got the gospel uh, to the circumcision. So the, the ministry was different because the audience was different. The ministry was different because the audience was different. And that takes us to the ethnic groups in the Bible. The Bible must be viewed I don't even know if this is a word. Ethnically. Okay. Uh, it probably isn't a word. I just made it up. But there are only three ethnic groups found in the Bible. Look again so that you have it in front of you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 32. First Corinthians 10 and verse 32. Give none offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles nor to the church of God. There are only three ethnic groups in the Bible. So uh, if you use the example that I gave many, many moons ago about a letter written to me, to my household. It was addressed to the Young family. And the first sentence said, I love the dress that you wore Sunday. Just because the letter was addressed to the Young family and all mail comes to me first and I opened it up, I knew that the person was not addressing the dress that I wore that I'm wearing. Okay? It is important to understand that when a letter is written, yeah. it might be written to a whole group, but all, all the parts in there apply to every person in the group. There's nothing wrong. We're not saying that the Bible is only written to certain people at all. The Bible is God's inspired word to people. But it doesn't mean that it's all written directly to me, doctor. There are three groups, so there's only three different uh, doctrines that are going to be presented. One is Jewish, one is going to be Gentile, and one is going to be Church of God. Those are the only three. You can't get it any other way. That's the reason I said truths that cannot be um, denied. You don't have to agree with me, but you can't deny it, all right? When studying the Bible, one must determine what group is being addressed. And we've been through this, but I want to do it again just so you see it clear. Look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And in James chapter 1, look at verse number 1. James 1, 1. James 1, 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, here's what we look in every one of our letters for. To whom is it written? To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Well, how are we to understand the twelve tribes scattered abroad? Go, keep your hand there and go back to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. The Bible is its own interpreter. It does a really great job, much better than you and I would ever do. No. And Acts chapter 2, verse 5, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And then it gives the list of the nations of where those Jews were scattered. They were at Pentecost because the Jews made their track back 
to Jerusalem for Pentecost. And that's the reason they were dwelling there. They were devout. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at James to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, James wrote his epistle to the Jews. Okay? And uh, look at Hebrews chapter 1. Since you were right there real quick. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. You wouldn't really have to get much more definition than that, but I'm going to give you some just because some people might argue that point. But if you have fathers and if you have prophets, you have Jews. Okay. But look, if you would, with me at Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. And if you come down through all of chapter 3, verses 1 through 19, he says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Now, why would you bring Moses into that? God's going to raise up a prophet like unto Moses. Moses. That's the reason you bring it in. Verse 3, For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he, hath, uh, as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. And every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And again, he goes back to Moses. Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken of after, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Well, that's an interesting statement. We don't have time to get into it. Wherefore, parentheses, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if you will uh, hear his voice, harden not your heart in the day, uh, as in the provocation, in the day of the temptation in the watch. Well, Who's that? John Who's, the Baptist. And the Jews. I mean, it's all there, okay? And, and when you were, here it is again. Fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works, how many years? Forty years. Forty years. How long were they wandering in the wilderness? Forty years. Forty years, okay? And wherefore, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their hearts and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. That's the end of the parentheses. All right. So if you go back, verse 7, wherefore, then go to verse 12. Take heed. To everything in between, there's a parenthesis. So the nice. thought is connected, verse number 7, wherefore, verse 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelieving and departing from the living God. Uh, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For you are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. And there it is again. There's that end, that end, that end. Steadfast to the end. Is there anybody in here that knows Christ their personal Savior that doesn't know for sure if they're going to make it until the end? I do. We know we're going to make it because it's not about us, right? We know we're going to make it just because Him, right? Whoever this is, they're not going to make it if they don't hold out to the end. All right? Uh, for some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of... Uh-oh, who's that? Who came out of Egypt? Jews, the Jews, by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Who's he talking about? The Jewish, the Jewish, Jewish people. Jewish. So when you look at Hebrews, when it starts, God who at sundry times and in divers manners and times past spoke to us by prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by the Son. There's no question that Hebrews is Jewish. Mm -hmm. 
The book of Hebrews is Jewish. Now, let's compare that. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 7. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 7. We're always looking for that to, to who of the letter, right? To who is it written? I mean, all my letters that came to me specifically to me were Dear John. <laughs> I got so many of those Dear John. Broke my heart as a teenager. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but when it says young family, that could be our whole family and different segments in that letter apply to different ones of us. Okay. Here, notice the two, verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So these are people who are beloved of God and called to be saints, who have connection to God through grace. All right. So Romans chapter 1 and verse 7. And now look at 1 Corinthians. We'll just take a little walk here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And look at verse 2. And again, we're always looking to, to who? To the letter. Look at verse 2. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. That's pretty clear. Not Jew, it's to the church. Remember, there's only three groups. Jew, Gentile, Church of God. Alright, look at Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. And look at verse number 2. Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 2. Galatians 1 and verse 2. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. This, it's not difficult if a person just looks at the scripture and takes them for what they are. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 1. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. The church. Look at um, Philippians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, here's the word, to all, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi. The church the faithful saints there in Philippi. Look at Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 2. Here's the two word again. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae. Again, this is specific addressed to specific groups. And we might as well just finish it because we're nearly have it done. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians. You just cannot, you just cannot get away from it, okay? Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse number 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of, Thessalon of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, there's only three groups found in the Bible, and before we start reading something for understanding, we want to look for those to who letters. Who's it to? When studying the history recorded in the book of Acts, a history covering the time period from Jesus' ascension to the 50th or 5th century, excuse me, 5th century. So that would be Jesus' ascension to 50 AD. One cannot dismiss the fact that Peter is the main character in the book of Acts from chapter 1 to chapter 15. And Paul is the main character in the book of Acts 
from chapter 15 to chapter 28. And we know that that's interesting because chapter 15 is pivotal. That's when all of these different sects came together to the council and said, we need to find out which direction to go. And again, Galatians 2, 7 defines why the main character changes were in the book. Acts 1 through chapter 15 is primarily Jewish. And chapter 15 through 28 is primarily Gentile. This change of the main character is bigger than just the character, Peter or Paul. According to Paul's testimony, as we've already seen in Galatians 1, what Paul came up with was not anything like what had existed. I didn't receive it of man, neither was I taught it. God revealed it to me. And what did he call that that God revealed to him? My gospel. Possessively. While Peter preached to the Jew and Paul preached to the heathen or Gentiles, when the gospel Paul preached was accepted by the individual, they lost their ethnic identity and became a part of Christ's body, the church. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, we've looked at this several times. It's a wonderful example of how a person comes to know Christ as their Savior. Beginning in verse number 9. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. We're learning about mysteries. Mystery is something that he didn't show before. According to the good, good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Now, this is interesting. The fullness of times is a phrase that we've seen several times, but specifically in two. One is in Romans and one is in Luke. And it is the fullness of the Gentiles become in. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he, Christ, might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him. So this is a very interesting thing, is that the fullness of times, the times of the Gentiles, this focus is coming in, it's in this dispensation that it happens, and that Verse 12, we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Now, what does that look like? All right. So, we, if we were reading this and we were diagramming this sentence, we would start with the word trust. And then we would go down in these verses. But that's not how God does it through the inspiration through Paul. Paul starts at the end. And as he goes through, he works backwards. Look at it with me. All right. What does trust look like? Verse 12. Who first trusted in Christ. In whom he also trusted after. Okay. So the trust came before the word of truth. So the word of truth all right, is before the trusted, all right, in whom also you trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. If there's any question of what the word of truth is, Paul is saying it's the gospel. Remember what Paul said about his gospel? If I preach to you any other gospel when I preach to him, let it be accursed. Galatians chapter 1. All right. 
So then notice that it goes on. In whom also you trust after that you first you heard the word truth. All right. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believe. All right. So you heard. And then you believed. Does everybody that hears the word of truth believe? No. Lots of people hear the word of truth. When I was a young kid, um, Billy Graham was just a young boy. Maybe you remember this too. That was back in a time in the United States where they suspended every one of the sitcoms in the evening. Every CBS, NBC, ABC, all of them shut completely down all their programming. And Billy Graham, that's back when he had a Bible and he preached the truth. And he'd let their, he'd chuck the corn. I mean, he did. And at the end, you can see the people coming down the aisles. To this day, I run across people that say that they found Christ as their Savior in one of those uh, great evangelistic rallies that he had. All right? But... Not everybody came down to the front. They all heard the same message, but not everybody came. So you hear the word of truth, then you believe on that truth, all right, uh, and then you're sealed. What is it that seals? Holy Spirit comes on the inside. All right. And so, trust, trusting in Christ is about hearing the word of truth, believing the word of truth, and accepting him as your Savior. That's how you trust Christ. The Bible is this clear book. It never leaves anything vague or unknown. It completely gives it out. Someone says, how in the world do you get saved? Well, why don't we ask God and his word? You hear the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation. Paul's real specific about what that is. The death, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 3, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then you make a decision whether you're going to believe it or not. And if you believe it, God's going to give you his Holy Spirit. That's what it means when it says trust in Christ. Now this is interesting. Once that happens... Notice what it says down here in um, um, somewhere. i got to find it here. Uh, verse 22. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. This is, there's no question at all that when a person trusts in Christ, following this, which we just outlined, when they do that, they lose their individual identity. They no longer are considered Jew or Gentile. They're considered Christian. Church of God. And that's what he talks about right down through the end of Ephesians right there. All right, so it's important for us to consider the audience and to view the Bible from a standpoint of the ethnic groups in the Bible. All right? And then we'll stop with this one, but the differences must be noted. You can't go through all of this and then say, oh, that was really great. So here's someone getting the kingdom of heaven and someone getting the kingdom of God. They're the same. You, you, have, you, you have to note the differences. And that's what we're going to start next week. And we're going to add 8 and 9. And 8 is the word church. Nine is the word baptism. You say, I thought we were talking about the difference between 
the local church <laughs> and the universal church. Yes, we are. All these things are what answers that question. I mean, we can just answer it. But the same people that disagreed with us before will disagree with us after we answer it. That's the reason I said there's some things that can't be denied. Again, a person doesn't have to believe them. And a lot of people will choose not to. But you can't, you can't deny this. And next week, we'll see these two words, uh, church and gospel. And it's tags to this number seven. Differences must be noted in the Bible. Things that are different are not the same. The kingdom of heaven is not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not the kingdom of heaven. John's ministry, Jesus' ministry, is different than the Apostle Paul. You have to, mm -hmm. you have to note the differences that you have. There is an Old Testament, there is a New Testament. You have to note those things. And, and then you have to submit yourself to the undeniable truths of God's Word, which is a part of what we've been talking about from the very beginning. I know you'll tire of me saying this, but we either make the Bible fit into our diagram or we submit ourselves to the Word of God. If all of the work that's been done to rewrite the Bible had been spent to reread the Bible. Just think of all the reading that could have been done and the learning that could have been gained. Mm -hmm. But instead, if you're a Jehovah Witness, you can't have in John 1.1 1, 1, was God. So you have to change that. And if you do not believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. You have to change 1 Timothy 3.16 without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. You've got to change that. Yeah. If you do not believe that Jesus is divine and that he's born of a virgin, you have to change Matthew 1.25. And knew her not till she brought forth her son. And leave out the word firstborn. If we were to spend a whole lot more time just reading the Bible than rewriting the Bible, so that now it makes sense to us. And that's the issue. Are we submissive to it? Or is it submissive to us? And so we see these undeniable truths. And when we see the differences, we have to say, I don't have to understand it. I just have to believe it. And that there is a difference. And I'm not going to walk over those differences or past those differences without making note of them. All right, so we'll look at the word church and baptism next week because we're such an active group here <laughs> I so much wanted to show you my chart but I have to wait till next week <laughs> you get, can you see it I just give you a peek All right, that's it if you really want to know it don't you Yeah, I'll write it up on the board next week it's really a blessing I think that you'll find it very encouraging as well alright well let's uh, turn our thoughts to the prayer time tonight uh, Dale and Lisa's daughter, her husband Rob, uh, son from a previous relationship, and uh, the son died. So um, uh, it's a very difficult time for the entire family. They're already going through quite a bit, and this just added one more layer on top of that. It was not a normal uh, expected death. Sympathy goes out to Rob and Susan's. Uh, we've been praying for Alan for quite a long time, and he passed away on the 8th. Uh, Joan's stepson, Hal, is, um, uh, was in the hospital. It looked pretty bad. His heart cath came back completely cleared, and um, he's free to go. So he's doing much better. Landon, unfortunately, uh, with his MRI CT scan, they found a new tumor. And so he's going to have to have another surgery and begin the process of treatments all over again. Shirley, um, such a sweet lady, uh, still dealing with breathing issues. So keep her in your prayer. Jeff's home, and uh, this surgery was great. Pray for both he and his wife, Cheryl. 
As I mentioned, Tracy had surgery to remove her upper lobe, and uh, the success the surgery was successful. Um, she does have a couple small complications. Blood pressure is real high, and they in doing the surgery they must have tore uh, the lungs a bit, and so there's a hole in the lung, and they think and expect that it will heal of its own, but um, her, her heart rate is extremely high, 150 uh, beats a minute, so keep her in your prayers. Um, Pat um, is dealing with a very bad cold. There's a lot of folks that have that, so what do we call these, the fall cold? Um, and then Jeff's sister, Jeanette, uh, she gets a boot off soon. Um, pray that the healing is good. Uh, Rob got test results back from his back and it wasn't what he thought and so they're going to hopefully try to keep him away from surgery which would be a blessing if the injections and the PT will help. Uh, Gina is uh, Glenda and Doug's daughter and she has a neighbor. Uh, her name is Valerie and not doing well. And then Sandy and uh, her family, uh, as they um, spend the last few hours, if she still is with us, with Doris. And if not, absent from the body, present with the Lord. What a blessing that is. Uh, Cheryl asked for her cousin, Tom, that we would pray for him. He has cancer. And then Doug's mom um, has uh, the dementia and uh, is struggling considerably. They're putting her in a, a nursing home. Pre please pray with them about how that is. When you have a large family, uh, those are the things that usually destroy a family. So uh, pray for them. And then Marilyn uh, continues to uh, uh, show good signs under physical therapy uh, for her arm. Uh, Vonda, as I understand, is at home. And uh, uh, with her family, hospice is there. They do not expect a recovery. And Judy is doing well. The last time she called the office, it was to ask who she needed to send cards to. So uh, that's always a, a blessing to see that. Uh, we want to pray for the uh, picnic Saturday. Uh, the weather's supposed to be nice. Uh, we have uh, a lot of new families and faces showing up, uh, which is a, a wonderful issue. And I uh, pray that uh, as we go to these events that we won't just find our own group and be happy with our own group but that we will intentionally reach out to those people who do not yet have a group i always say i try to remember when i go to a church what it was like the first time i went to church you don't know anybody and when i got in the car and i went home there was chatter in the car and it went something like this that was the friendliest church or boy they sure don't like visitors so somewhere in between those two bookends and um, the Bible says, he that desires friends must first show himself friendly. And for a church to grow, it means we have to welcome, like really overboard welcome, uh, new faces. And uh, some people, like uh, I know some people that have never met a stranger in their life, and uh, the majority of people I know are not like that. <laughs> so it's always tough to come out of your comfort zone and walk over to someone shake their hand, start up a conversation, you think after I say hi, my name is, what's yours, what do you say next, okay, but uh, it's so important, so please pray that uh, these new folks that are coming uh, will feel the warmth uh, that we have experienced ourselves, so uh, do that. Okay, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. We are, as always, Lord, very thankful to you. I spoke with someone today, and I said, uh, of all the things in my life I'm thankful for and how blessed I am in every area. In areas because I talk to a lot of people as a pastor and I realize after talking with them how blessed I am. And I don't ever want to forget as the song that we have sung from time to time here and through our Christian life says, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. That when we come right down to it, uh, Lord, every blessing comes from you, and we acknowledge that tonight. We thank you for that. Uh, Lord, even Shirley, as she's on uh, the live stream with us this evening, um, 
Lord, we, we could just go forever on the greatness of our God. How different that surgery could have been. And how wonderful uh, you have been with her. Lord, she is just one. There are so many on our prayer list uh, that have uh, experienced the touch of the Lord. Um, felt the comfort of prayer from other people. And have sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. Lord, we know that you don't heal us just so we'll be well. You heal us because you have a work for us to do. And all of us have been sick, and now we are well. And we pray, Father, that you'd help us to be about the Master's business. Or one day we are, as many others have, going to shed this uh, robe of sinful mortality. And, Lord, we're going to be present immortally and with an incorruptible body with the Lord for which we love and desire. But until then... Help us to take this corruptible body and this immortality that's mortal now and let's use it for the purpose of winning people to Jesus. Help us to do that. I pray, Father, that you'd be at the list of names that we mentioned tonight. Lord, so many on our prayer list. We do ask that you continue to be with them, minister to their needs. My heart goes out to little Landon. And, uh, Lord, you get your hopes up, and, and it seemed to be dashed. And I just ask, Lord, that you'd be with him in a special way for all of uh, Lisa's family. And, um, Lord, I can only imagine how difficult it is uh, to see one more thing uh, that uh, looks like um, brings pain and suffering to a family. Ask, Lord, that you'd be with them. I also ask, Lord, that you'd be with Shirley. She's such a sweet sweet dear uh, lady help her with her breathing issues for Tracy that her recovery be swift and thorough and complete uh, Father thank you for answer prayer with Rob and his back pray Lord that you be with Sandy uh, Lord I just pray that you be with her in a special way she's the primary caretaker there uh, be with her and Bill and, and uh, uh, Doris Lord and Rob and Susan as they uh, all uh, rally around her as she says goodbye to this world and enters into the arms of the Lord. Father, we pray that you continue to be with the Sarver family and Lord, um, uh, the joys and the sorrows, the heights and the depths of the experiences of God's people. They have certainly been on every plain and in every valley. I ask, Lord, that you'd be with them and comfort them in a way that no human being can. But thank you for your choice servants who always come along at a time when we need them. And I pray, Father, that uh, we might be a blessing to that family and their needs. Continue to be with Ed and Judy. We love them. Pray that, Lord, you'd be with them and minister to their needs. Thank you, Lord, for healing uh, Dave um, Fleming and uh, bring him back to us uh, Lord I just ask that you continue to be with him watch over him I ask also Lord that you be with our service this Sunday uh, that the word of God might go out in clarity and that Lord you be at the picnic as we fellowship together and prepare for the changing of the season and the beginning of the fall and winter times Lord bless I pray this church that we might be effective and a lighthouse for you on this corner. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Thanks so much. God bless you. Have a great evening. Thank you for joining us online. And I hope that you'll join us again uh, Sunday morning at 9.15 as we begin our adult Sunday school class. God bless. Mike, you are.